Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy, right here on the Dice Tower. Today we're going to be taking a look at this little gem right here, Harmonies. This is a game that's been put out by Libelude, uh, designed by Johan Benvenuto, and it's all about getting the right uh, biomes in your thing to score points with your different animals. Let's get down to the table and take a look. So here I have a two-player game of Harmony set up for you, and basically what we're looking at here is you're going to be on your turn uh, taking a set of three tokens from one of these spots and placing them on your board in any fashion that you want, provided that there are some stacking rules that we'll go over in just a few moments. And in addition to that, you also have the ability uh, to choose to take a animal card from the row that's available and if you have done that in a previous uh, turn, you're also able to take one of your animal cubes off of those cards and place them uh, where they are able to be placed. But those are both uh, not compulsory. The only compulsory thing that you have to do is take one of these groups of uh, three tokens and place them on your board anywhere you wish. At the end of your turn, you have to refill uh, whatever uh, spot that you took your tokens from. And if you took an animal card, you also have to refill that spot as well. Once your, re once your turn is complete, the other person or the person in clockwise uh, fashion will take their turn and you continue to take turns doing that until there are either no tokens left in the pouch to refill the center board or if one player has at least two or fewer spaces left on their uh, board at the end of their turn, that will trigger the end of the game and you'll play until all players have uh, had an equal number of turns. At that point, you'll score points based on uh, your animal spirit cards, any of the animal cards that you've taken, and uh, the general way to score how you've placed your, your tokens on your board as well. Whoever has the most points is the winner. So looking at their spirit card, they really want to get their spirit card, um, their spirit animal token out there. So they may want to look at this here to determine which one of these things you're going to take first. Noting that there's a lot of mountains on here, they're probably going to want to take this one right here and they'll go ahead and start. They can put these wherever they want. They don't have to be adjacent to each other or anything like that. But there are some stacking limits uh, that are on the page. So basically, if you have mountain tokens, they can be stacked upon each other. Uh, river or water tokens cannot be stacked, so that's something to take into effect. Uh, housing tokens, which are the red ones, can be stacked on top of each other, or they can be stacked on top of mountain or a wood. Woods can only be stacked on top of each other, and then uh, foliage tokens, or the green tokens, can be stacked on top of wood tokens to make trees, or they can be placed by themselves to make smaller trees or bushes. Uh, field tokens over here, the yellow ones, can only be stacked, uh, well, they cannot be stacked. So this is a good thing to have memorized, but it's not very difficult at all. But that's the main thing that you have to talk about uh, when you're placing things on your boards. So they may want to, they're wanting to build this uh, diagram right there. So maybe, um, let's see here. Uh, maybe they'll want to place something like this and this. And then this uh, little guy here for a river, uh, we'll put it just right here out in the middle. And that's all they're going to be doing. They're working towards trying to put their uh, spirit animal out. Uh, but another thing that we want to make sure we're uh, being careful with is that the edge of the card here tells you what kind of token your uh, animal counter needs to be put on. So you don't want to have uh, a lot of cards that have the same thing because then you're going to start running out of places to put your animal tokens faster. So you may want to be a little bit more diversified. Uh, so this guy 
has, uh, and we've got the ability to work towards getting there. So we're going to go ahead and choose this one. You can have a maximum of four different animal tiles, including, or animal types rather, including your spirit animal as first. But as soon as you complete it, it'll move off opening up that spot. So whenever a person takes an animal card like this right here, they're going to take a number of animal tokens uh, denoted by the number of spots that are on the card. Now that they have finished their turn, they will grab three new tokens to go out here on the board to replace what was taken. And then another animal card comes out as well, just like that. As it comes to my turn, I'm going to go ahead and take this one right here because it's uh, the one that closest, closely relates to the my spirit animal. So when I'm taking this, I'm going to look at uh, cards that are out here that uh, are going to work well with what I'm trying to do as well. So I think what I'll do is I'll place uh, this guy right here like this. And then we'll put... Uh, that one right there, and then we'll put the, the blue one right down here, and I'm also going to take this one, and this is going to help uh, work along well with my spirit animal, and on top of that, it's two different colors, so that was pretty cool. I'll go ahead and refill both uh, things here, and it goes back to my opponent's turn. They're going to choose to take this one right here, and they're going to place both of these right next to it, and that uh, is going to allow them to place out an animal token. This one right here, I think we will put uh, right there just to uh, uh, you know, plan ahead a little bit. Uh, but now that she has actually finished one of the uh, qualifications for this biome, she's going to be able to take and put uh, one of her animal tokens right here, uh, denoted by there. And now this animal is going to be scoring her five points at the end of the turn, at the end of the game. Uh, if she's able to put both of these out here as well, then she'll be able to score 16 points with this card at the end of the game. But we'll have to see if that works out for them. Now that they have a, uh, a red card out there, we're going to go ahead and choose to take this one. And that gives them something else to work towards. Uh, and they'll take three more animal cubes and put them out here like this. And that will be the end of, of their turn. Coming back to my turn, I'm going to choose to take this group right here. And this is going to allow me to place one right here next to that. Then I'll take this green and put it right on top of that wood. And then I'll take this field and put it right here. And what this has done is it's going to allow me to, first of all, take my spirit animal and place it on this field right here because I have finished that pattern. So that can move down. And now uh, the spirit animals are going to give me the ability to score different things at the end of the game in addition to the basic way to score uh, for those types. So that's pretty cool. I've got that out of the way. But it also allows me to, to put a, another one right here because this parrot also has the correct pattern here like that. And so now this one's scoring me four points as well. So that's how the game would basically continue on until, as I said earlier, there are no more uh, tiles to be put uh, out onto the central board at the end of somebody's turn, or somebody has uh, two or fewer uh, open spaces on their board at the end of their turn you complete that round so that everybody has the same number of turns on the, on the uh, game, and then you'll score points. And whoever has the most points is the winner. So that's about that for how to play harmonies. Now, I did give you a very general sense. Didn't go over a lot of the minutia, but... There isn't a whole lot of minutia in the game. It's very cut and dry. And that's really kind of where my final thoughts are going to, to, to lie here because uh, there, this is a very straightforward game with not any uh, real tricks or uh, anything up its sleeve or anything like that. It's just a very uh, cut and dry, this is how you play the game. Now go have fun. Now, JT and I did a nature-themed games list uh, of a while ago, both a bottom five and a top five. And basically, neither of us had, had played this game before, uh, before making that list. And this is one of the main games that people uh, mentioned to us in the comments about, you need to play this game to see if it would make this list. And I, I have to tell you that, uh, and this is a little bit of foreshadowing, but... Uh, this would probably have been on that nature themes list because I don't 
play a lot of games that have that nature theme to it. It's not that I dislike the theme or anything like that. It's just not a real pull for me. Uh, but this would have definitely made that list. It would have knocked one of the other ones off. I don't know exactly which one, uh, but it probably would have been on this list had I played this game before making it. My first pro of the game is going to go to the actual spirit animal cards. Now, the spirit animal cards that we uh, we had in the game, I just basically chose a couple of uh, cards to put out there. Didn't really look at which ones because uh, you, what you're basically supposed to do is you deal two out to everybody and then they get to choose one. And that's a pretty cool thing. But the reason that this is a pro for me is because these spirit animals give you something to go for at the very beginning of the game. And then on top of that, it's also going to help you choose what other animal cards you're going to pick uh, to kind of synergize with that spirit animal and uh, be able to score a good number of points with your spirit animal. Even if they didn't give you that bonus way to score at the end of the game, they, they basically just give you something to start shooting for. You can basically get stuck thinking, well, I don't know which one of these animal cards I'm going to want to go for. I don't even have any. They don't really even match the things that are out here. But if you have these uh, spirit cards already there, you know what you need to start looking for at the very beginning of the game. And I love that jump start to your stat strategy or to your tactics. Now, the rules say that you don't have to use these. Um, and I would agree with that. It's, 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 it's a level of complexity that gets added to the game right on the start. But I think it's good complexity, frankly. I think the positive outweighs the possible negative that comes from using your spirit cards. So I would encourage people to just go ahead and use your spirit cards from the first game on because, uh, you know, at the beginning of the game, it gives everybody something to go for uh, w without having a lot of other knowledge. And I think it's a great little way to uh, jumpstart your strategy for the game. So that's my first pro. My second pro of the game is the artwork. Now, the artwork of the cards is not really one that I absolutely love from the beginning. It's not the kind of, uh, it's not hyper-realism that I, I, I really enjoy, but it's, I like things that look the way they should in reality, um, but you can still tell it's artwork. So I don't necessarily really enjoy games that have hyper-realistic artwork. Uh, this kind of goes a little bit in the other direction. The animals themselves look the way that they should, which is a cool thing, but everything else is kind of just suggestive. Not really abstract, but just suggestive of the different kinds of uh, biomes that these animals are living in. Uh, and I really do enjoy it. Um, it makes for a very family-friendly uh, look for the game, which I think this hits on all cylinders as far as family friendliness, but the artwork really makes the game look interesting. Each card is indicative of the kinds of tokens, land tokens, that it's going to use. So if there's a lot of mountains, there's going to be a lot of grays. And then if it's mountains and fields, there's a little bit of yellow thrown in there. But if there's a lot of uh, uh, houses in there. There's going to be a lot of reds, and if there's uh, uh, houses and some, some trees, there's going to be some, some greens and browns in there as well, and I really liked that about the cards. Um, the graphic design of the cards, the artwork that's employed on the cards, all led you down the same path of what you're looking for, and I really did enjoy that a lot. I think it was a, a great piecing together of artwork, uh, mechanisms and functionality all at the same time and I thought it was a, a great uh, little addition to uh, uh, an otherwise very simple game but it's one of those things that kind of elevates that simple game to to the next echelon and I thought the artwork was a great thing so it's my second pro. My third pro is uh, the familiar mechanisms that were employed uh, by the game and when I say familiar mechanisms I'm thinking of when you're having that open draft when you're having that uh, you have different groups of things that you can take on your turn uh, and those spots get refilled every turn, the open drafting of the cards. Those are something that to me is a very familiar thing. But on top of that, uh, the familiarity of the mechanisms allows them to also introduce a couple of new things to those mechanisms. The spatial organization of what you're doing on the actual board, I really enjoyed that. But it's not just two-dimensional. There's also a third dimension to, uh, to account for the different ways that you can stack 
your uh, tokens that you take, your land tokens, your your uh, uh, discs. It also uh, talks about the long the the length of the game as well, because if you're taking a lot of cards that that need you to spread your animal tokens out, I'm sorry, your uh, land tokens out a little bit more, uh, then that's going to make the game go a little bit faster than if you're someone who is building up. Uh, your tokens and taking tokens and stacking them instead of spreading them out. Uh, so the mechanisms really, really did a very good job of playing off of each other to make a very interesting experience for me, but it wasn't so uh, thought provoking and so thought wrenching that it made it more complex than it really should be. I like that. There's so many different levels of uh, thought processes that go on here. It's light, but it's also very interesting and it's also very engaging and challenging. And I think they did a great job with that, with this one. My fourth pro is going to be component quality. And, and uh, that is definitely where it's at. I love this size of a card. Um, I love it because it's a little bit more functional. You have more room to put all of your different animal tokens on it, but it also gives a lot more room for uh, the great artwork that's on it, but uh, the components themselves were all a good card stock. Not linen finish or anything like that, and I tend to like linen finish cards, but it's not a big thing for them not to be linen finish. They're still a great, uh, a great uh, semi-gloss finish and um, uh, good uh, weight as far as the uh, cardstock is concerned. Uh, all of the uh, different land tokens are these chonky wooden bits, and I love those. On top of that, I love the visual pop that these animal tokens give uh, the game as you have them all set up on your board. It just really makes that visual appeal so much more inviting. Uh, people are super interested in what's going on just by how the game looks, so I love that as well. I do also like the fact that you have two layered boards. Uh, two-sided boards, rather. On this side, you're, you're basically going to be scoring your water tiles in a river-type format. The longer the river that you can have, the more points you're going to score. On this one, you're trying to make islands with your water uh, tiles that you're adding to your board. Uh, you're trying to make little pockets of, of land. And the more pockets of land you have, the higher points you score. So I like that as well. That's a really cool thing, but it's kind of being thrown in here with the components because I think that's that is a mechanism, but it's also a component as well. Uh, so I like that uh, very, very much. Scoring, you would think, is uh, difficult, but it really isn't. Um, and that's another pro for the game. The the scoring is uh, after your you're, now. Let me let me say this: after your first game. Um, you're going to be able to score very easily. The first game is a little bit difficult to understand. You really kind of have to slog through the scoring on the first game, but after that, it makes sense. Um, but uh, generally speaking, scoring is not difficult. The first time you do it, you'll, you'll have some questions, but you'll get through it. It shouldn't be a problem at all. And you have these handy dandy little score sheets to help you with it. So that's a good thing as well. Now, my only con with the game uh, is that this little bag here, um, and I, I know my pros were component quality, and generally speaking, I stand firm on that. But um, uh, Jesse, my wife, did have to do a little stitch job on the, uh, on the bag here. It was a little bit too rustic, let me just put it that way. And uh, it started splitting after a couple of uh, games, so we had to uh, uh, do some surgical um, uh, stitching there and close that back up. So that's my only real con with the game is that part uh, the bag had to be re-sewn. Um, but other than that, I don't really have any other cons because this is the kind of game that I'm really looking forward to uh, getting more of in my collection because it's, it's visually appealing. Uh, the mechanisms are simple yet engaging and challenging. It does handle up to four, which is a great uh, number of players uh, for for uh, gateway type situations. Um, so it's just a awesome, very enjoyable game. And uh, I can't say too much more good about it. If I had played this game, 
before our nature's list that JT and I made, it definitely would have made the, the, the pop because um, it is a great little fun game and it has that nature theme uh, running in throughout with both animals and uh, biomes and uh, territories and lands and all of that kind of stuff. So uh, two thumbs up for me. This is going to get an eight out of 10 because... Uh, I really enjoyed the game. Uh, the bag having to be stitched up probably ticked uh, one pot out of it because after a couple of games, it really should last longer than that. So, But as far as gameplay is concerned, how it looks on the table and how much fun it is, a definite strong 8 out of 10 from me. Thank you for joining me here on the Dice Tower. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side, though. Take care. <laughs>